All right, lesson two, four, finding maximums and minimums of polynomial functions. To write a polynomial function for a given situation and to find the maximum or minimum value of the function. Okay, so where have we studied maximums and minimums? Maximums and minimums that we've studied occur on the graph of quadratic functions. So there's our standard form of a quadratic. Where's the maximum or minimum value? That's our vertex. Where does the vertex come from? Negative b over 2a for the x-coordinate. And then our y-value, we plug the x-coordinate back in. Okay? So your goal is going to be to write a function. And if that function is quadratic, then the max or min will occur at the vertex. For higher order polynomials, okay, so if you have something like ax to the cubed or a polynomial of the fourth degree, then we would need dif different strategies and quite possibly a graphing calculator or some type of graphing system. Okay, please complete this for homework. Complete these two for homework. Okay, you just took your quiz on this. This was lesson two, three. And we will go over these in class tomorrow. All right. Last warm-up, complete that for homework. Okay, so this is from the textbook number one on page 71. A farmer wants to make a rectangular enclosure using a wall as one side and 120 meters of fencing for the other three sides. So here's our figure. Here's the barn wall, so that won't be used, or that will be used rather, so we wouldn't need any material to go along the barn wall. So if this is rectangular, this is x, okay, opposite sides are congruent, and we'll name that length y. So first thing we have to do, express the area in terms of x and state the domain of the area function. Okay, so when I look at this, the area is length times width. So according to the dimensions I use, it's x times y. So now I want to express the area in terms of x. So that means the only variable is allowed to be an x. Okay, so I have this here as x, but now we need to figure out how to get rid of that y coordinate, that y value. Okay, this is where your other piece of information comes in. I have 120 meters of fencing available for the other three sides. So what does that represent? That 120 meters represents the perimeter of this enclosure that wants to be made. How do we find the perimeter of our figure? I have, oops. Perimeter is the sum of all the sides, so 2x plus y. All right, we're given the perimeter is 120, so 120 is equal to 2x plus y. Solving this equation for y, I get 120 minus 2x. So now what can I replace this y with? So I just found this dimension to be in terms of x. So now to answer the question, I come back to my area formula, express the area in terms of x. So now there's my area function. The second part says list the domain. The domain are all the possible values for x. Okay, we're talking length here. Sorry guys. So I know that I cannot have a side length of zero. Okay, so zero is the smallest it can be. My other restriction is going to come from the other side length. So I know that this side length also cannot equal zero. So if I make this into a simple equation, then 60 can't be x. And not only can 60 not equal x, it actually is going to have to be smaller than that. Okay, if you plug in any number bigger than 60, it would give you a negative dimension there. So we know that we can't have negatives and we can't have zero lengths when we're talking about these problems. Okay, so I want to introduce a new notation to you. So this is my inequality form. Now your interval form would look like this. It looks like a set of parentheses, but it is not an ordered pair. 
This is not saying x equals 0 and y equals 60. This is read the interval between 0 and 60. Okay, so I'll use interval notation in class. Um, in calculus, in college level math, you'll see it in interval notation. I'm okay with you writing it as an inequality, but you ha you're responsible for knowing those two things are equivalent. Okay, so now let's answer part B. Find the value of x that gives the greatest area. Here's my keyword. If I'm finding the greatest, I'm looking for a maximum. What am I looking to maximize? I'm looking to maximize the area. Okay. So I'll put my dimensions back on here. So we just determined area is length times width. Well, like I said to start the video, what do we need in order to find a maximum? We need a quadratic function. So I'm going to distribute my x. And now I have a quadratic. Where does the, how do I maximize? I have to look for the vertex. So x equals opposite of b all over 2a. So I get negative 120 all over negative 4. So 30 will be the x value that maximizes my function. So 30 meters, we're talking about lengths of fencing here, is x. All right, so find the value of x that gives the greatest area. So 30 would be my answer to part b. But now when I go to find part C, what is the greatest area? So how do I find the area? I plug it back into my area function. So the area when x is equal to 30, I'm going to plug it into my factored form. Minus 2 times 30. So I get 30 times 120 minus 60 will give me another 60. So my greatest area would be 1,800 square meters. So we've talked about this with graphs, but remember the x value is where the vertex occurs. The y coordinate is what the actual value of the max or min is. Okay, so where will the max occur when x is equal to 30 meters? What is the actual maximum? That's when we have to plug it back into whatever function we're attempting to maximize or minimize. All right. Next, if a ball is thrown vertically upward at 30 meters per second, then its approximate height in meters t seconds later is, by, is given by this function. Okay, so all of the information has been substituted for you, so we're just going to focus on this. Okay, part A. After how many seconds does the ball hit the ground? After how many seconds, so I'm looking for t, does the ball hit the ground? Okay, so if a ball is thrown up, eventually it's going to have to come back down. So when does it hit the ground? This would be when the height of the ball equals zero. So I'm looking for t when h of t is equal to zero. Okay, it's already in quadratic form, so I'm going to take out a greatest common factor of negative 5t. That leaves me with negative 6 plus t. Setting each factor equal to 0, I get time is equal to 0. And then I get time is equal to 6. So after how many seconds will the ball hit the ground? After 6 seconds the ball will have thrown, been thrown up and come back down and hit the ground. Okay, now for part B, what's the domain of H? This is asking how long is the ball in the air, in flight, from start to finish. So now this domain, I can act, I'm going to equal them. So at time t is equal to zero, I'm at ground level. And then what did you guys just tell me in part A? How long did it take for the ball to hit the ground again? It took six, sec six seconds. So in interval notation, 
when I include the values, my domain would be from zero to six with hard brackets around it. Okay, so the inequality can include the values. So when I write it in bracket notation, it has to be the, or in interval notation, it has to be these hard brackets. Okay, then in part C, how high does the ball go? What is this really asking me for? What's the maximum? of the ball in the air. Okay, where does our max come from? It's not going to change. It's the x-coordinate of our vertex. Let me use the same variables. Opposite of b all over 2 times a. So I get negative 30 over negative 10. So at 3 seconds at three seconds, the ball is at its highest point. But then to answer the question, actually, how high does the ball go? We want the height of the ball after three seconds. Plug that back into your function. 30 times 3, 5 times 3 squared. So I get 90 minus 5 times 9 gives me 45. And what's this? This is measured in meters. So. The final answer to part C would be 45 meters. Okay, I'm gonna set up one more example. Two numbers have a difference of six. What two numbers have a minimum product and then what is their actual product? Okay, so what two numbers have a minimum product? So I'm looking to find the smallest possible value when I multiply these numbers together. So I want the product of two numbers to be as small as possible. Okay, well I can't maximize or minimize until I have a quadratic function. X times Y is not a quadratic. Two different variables, no X squared. Okay, anything you need to think in your head in order to make, for that to make sense for you. But I do have a second piece of information. I'm told those numbers have a difference of 6. So when I subtract those numbers, the answer is going to be 6. So now look at what I'm able to do. I'm able to take my given information and I'm able to solve it for one of the variables. So I'm just going to solve for x by adding y to both sides. So now into my minimum equation, I can replace x with 6 plus y. Okay, so I took this and into my other equation, into the equation I'm attempting to minimize, I put, I replaced it to be in terms of y. So now I'm going to distribute the y. Now I have a quadratic equation. Now that it's a quadratic, I can find the vertex. My variable here is y, opposite of b, all over 2a. So what two numbers have a minimum product? All right, well, my first number, the y-coordinate, is going to be negative 3. So then how do I go back and find the x-coordinate? That's where I go to my given information. x is equal to 6 plus, I replace y with the value we found. So these two numbers have a difference of 6 and a minimum product. So then to answer what is the actual minimum product, then I go back and I multiply the values. So negative 9 is the smallest product of two numbers that have a difference of 6. Okay, we'll finish there. Please have those warm-up problems done for next class.